on the council suit again? Saying they're considering taking legal proceedings to get us off here? They'll never do that. Because they know perfectly well if they ever forced us off this site, the place would be a nice sort within a fortnight. <laughs> Hey, Cyril, this could be the most important letter anyone from round here has ever had. It's from the IMF. They took over from EMI, didn't they? <laughs> or was that HMV? Get show business out of your head, will you, Cyril? This is from the International Monetary Fund. World statesmen. I'm talking about kings and prime ministers. They sit up in bed and breathe in sharply when the IMF writes to them. What are they writing to us for? To me, Cyril. You see, the way I look at it, everyone who writes to them is on the catch. You know, want, want, want. Builders a dam here, finances a power station there. So I thought to myself, be smart, put up a scheme where there's something in it for them. Well, what did he say in it all? From the desk of Gaylord P. Eagle Bear. <laughs> hey, Cyril, he's the top man. I can't read this, you'll have to read it for me. From the desk of Gaylord P. Eagle Bear. Ill. Ill. That's the third. <laughs> Dear Mr. McGregor, the board have given deep consideration to your interesting proposal. However, having looked at the spread of investments available to us, we discovered that we can get eight and a quarter percent at the Heighton with Roby Building Society just <laughs> up the road from you. <coughs> Were you the head of state of an independent nation or chief finance minister of same, it would of course be different. Do not hesitate to get in touch should your status change in this respect. Yours sincerely. It's the same old story every time, you know. It's not what you know you know, it's who you know. You know why they treat me like this, Cyril? It's the address. What's wrong with the address? Well, the hut. <laughs> the old bomb site. Back of the supermarket. Brackets, former Waldorf cinema, off back Brownlow Street. We could easy change it. Eh? Instead of the hut, how about the chalet? <laughs> it's a dump, Cyril. It does not inspire confidence. <coughs> that is where you are wrong, Wes. The punter who comes in here knows straight off. He's not getting ripped off by snotty nose gets with suede <laughs> shoes and double breasted suits. He is not paying over the odds for plate glass or fitted carpets. He is getting a down to earth, honest to goodness deal. No nonsense, no frills, no hidden extras. I wrote that advert, so <laughs> Remember? You see, the difference between you and me is I'm smart enough to write it, and you're thick enough to believe it. <laughs> Who was that? The bloke from Garston who bought the Wolseley Hornets. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was in a few weeks ago moaning. I said if he wasn't happy to bring it back. Yeah, well, be fair to him. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Only there is a limit to how much he can carry in any one trip. Like, <laughs> you must admire his persistence back and forwards on the bus. I believe he's taking time off work and all. Put this in the spares department, will you? Right, see <laughs> And in conclusion, the grade of syrup you are using currently may be considered to possess optimum viscosity, comma, at least in the absence of evidence to the contrary from the syrup viscosity unit at Porton Down. Yours, etc. <laughs> oh, uh, no need to type that up tonight, Miss Say Faversham. Twenty to five, might as well get off. Me. You'll not know I'm here. Quite frankly, Mrs. Um, McGregor. McGregor, there have been several mornings I've come in and entertained the very doubt of which you speak. Oh, thank you very much. It's nice to be appreciated. <laughs> uh -huh. Good night, Miss Faversham. I do hope your mother's colon proves less irregular tonight. <laughs> Aye, now, uh, Mrs. Uh, 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 you'll be sure to lock up securely when you're finished. Oh, don't you worry. I oh, know you must have tins and tins of syrup on these premises. Well, I could keep an eye on them better if I knew where they were. <laughs> oh, we keep no syrup here. Oh, dear me, no. <laughs> in my experience, it would be a grievous mistake to have the syrup itself in the slightest proximity to files, records, documentation of any sort. Well, what exactly do you do? The Syrup Users Advisory Board collates and disseminates information from the four corners of the syrup using wand. We have as yet no powers of compulsion, more's the pity. <laughs> but uh, I mustn't get too technical with you. No, let us just say that we are ever ready to advise 
on the 1,001 contingencies that must of necessity arise in the syrup trades. This gentleman here is a fine figure of a man. <laughs> Have you noticed something about him? It's the way you tell a really good picture, and I had this of a painter. Well, painter and decorator. <laughs> The test is if the eyes follow you around the room, wherever you are. Aha! Uh -huh. You've noticed it too. Would that be the chap that did your job before you, like? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Merely one of the thousands of his race upon whose suffering and slavery the fortunes of the syrup trade were very largely founded. I... You know, I sometimes fancy I see in those eyes a reproach. But, eh, uh, I'm keeping you from your work, so I'll just say, eh... Uh, Good night to you, Mrs. A. Uh, aye. I'd never get the weight off my feet. They are Cyril. Syrup Users Advisory Board. What advice can they give you? <laughs> Make the spoon. That's it. Hey, man. What if the boss sees you sitting in his chair like that and I'm here to convince him that you're worth more than 62p an hour? He's gone. You've only just missed him. He doesn't hang round, does he? It's not even half past five yet. Oh, they're out that door like greyhounds out of a trap. <laughs> hey, Wes, look at that picture. You're always moaning because we never had a picture of your dad. <laughs> well, that gentleman there's the spitting image of him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <coughs> Mind you, we was going to have a photo took at the registry office. We're in Buckton Hall, Jerome's down London Road. And he turned up and all, which is more than can be said for your dad. <laughs> He was very nice about it. Tried ever so hard to cheer me up. He even come round again the day after. Well, to see he was all right. That was nice. Yeah. And to pick up his camera, like. Because <laughs> he'd left it on the dressing table. If I had an office like this, I could conquer the world. It gets me, you know, ma'am. The government is always pointing to the underutilization of resources. And here's this office lying idle 16 hours a day when it can be used by a thrusting, urgent, purposeful, dynamic young businessman who only needs that foothold to start him on the ladder. OK. We'll tell the sit-up advisory board they'll have to move out. <laughs> they already have. They do it every night at half past five. Wes. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yeah. I think it's a genuine conceptual breakthrough. <laughs> In city after city, Millions of officers lying idle 16 hours a day. If this catches on, I could get the Queen's Award for Industry. Wesley? Oh, good morning, Mr. Buchanan. <laughs> it's yourself, Mrs. McGregor. <laughs> Have you ever had the sensation, Mrs. McGregor, on entering a room that some, someone, or uh, perhaps I should say something, some presence, had only a moment before quit it? <laughs> of the last weeks, I've had the feeling of being, uh, oh dear me, how can I put this? Uh, yes, yes, I will say it. Haunted. Haunted? Oh, uh, I know it's an excitable young girl's word, but I can think of no other. <laughs> this, this building, Mrs. McGregor, is soaked in history. 
the slave trade. Unhappy black wretches were bought and sold on this very site. They're all living round our way now. <laughs> I tell you this now in the strictest confidence, Mrs. McGregor, but I have twice in the past week glimpsed a black man out of the corner of my eye, but when I turned my head, he wasn't there. Fancy. I am convinced, Mrs. McGregor, that some spirit is trying to communicate with me. I feel, especially as the day wears on, that he wants me out of this building. Is that right? Furthermore, Mrs. McGregor, the other night, on my way to the Syrup Users Federation annual dinner dance at the town hall, driving past in a taxi with Mrs. Buchanan, I glanced up at these windows, and I swear, Mrs. McGregor, I saw lights. I and glimpsed that same black face at the window. <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. McGregor? I shouldn't worry your head about it. What I always say is, there's some things we're not meant to know. <laughs> is that a blood stain? No, it's the stuff Faye's been putting on her teenage acne. <laughs> teenage acne, Faye? She's as old as I am, practically. <laughs> Faye is, yeah. But she's got pimples there. She's had 13 or 14 years. <laughs> Hello, son. Had a good night at the office. Snowed under, ma'am. It's taken me three hours to type one letter. <laughs> that reminds me. They used to come for you this morning. I'll get the tea on. The proposals you submitted have been studied by the board with interest. What board is that? The Regional Venture Board. Perhaps you would be good enough to contact me with a view to arranging a meeting to discuss the scale of funding you may require. Hey, he wants to meet my board of directors. You haven't got a board of directors. <laughs> of course I have. You never told me. <laughs> Why am I not a director? Because, Cyril, it's the same as having a good address. You've got to have names with a ring to them, like, you know, names that inspire confidence. So have you got? Well, there's Captain Ranulph Twistleton Wickham Fiennes. He's not on your board of directors. He's on my letterhead. Still, there's no need to worry about him, because we can say he's out the country. No, it's the other two that worry me. Who's that? The venerable Arthur Crumshaw Knowles, Archdeacon of Runcorn. <laughs> I can be him. Easy. Yeah, I'd already reconciled myself to that. I have got acting talent, you know. Everybody said I was bleeding knockout in the school play that time. <laughs> Them other two wise men were rubbish. <laughs> All right, Cyril, so you're in. But who do we know can pass herself off as Lady Antonia Fraser? <laughs> I hope you like these. That's something new. Farmer Giles's battered rings. It says on the packet here, sty to stow freshness. It's all in here by the squeal. <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> Lovely wee thing. Lovely wee thing. Cyril, when Mr. Osborne gets here, whatever you do, do not turn your back on him. You mean, he might put the knife in? No. You see, you're wearing your shirt back to front. Couldn't you get a proper dog collar? Look, I, I tried Burton's, Jormie's, Moss Bros. Nothing. They laughed at Tesco's. The only other thing I could think of was mugging a vicar. Well? Doesn't ever want about when you want one, is there? I'll tell you what, Wes, there could be a good act in this. Never mind the singing nuns, the singing vicar. Hey, you're onto something there. The singing vicar who's lost his voice. And you don't even have to do the act. We just have a whip round for you to send you off to Lourdes. Come on, will you, Lady Antonia? The board is waiting for you. Oh. I have to pop into the labs to rub some soap on these shoes. How Jasmine Riley walks up and down Lime Street after the night in these, I'll never know. Cyril. Be honest with me. Does me ma'am look anything like Lady Antonia Fraser to you? She looks better than Lady Antonia Fraser to me. 
Ma'am, um, how can I put this? When he gets here, try not to say too much, all right? Why is that? Well, you know, uh, Lady Antonia probably talks posh, you know, like she's peeling spuds with her teeth. Well, that's where you're wrong. Well, as she's done, she's never tried to hide the fact she comes from round Everton Valley. Many's the time I've seen her with a skirt tucked up in her knickers, bouncing a ball against the end wall. Living in the end house isn't all roses like it's cracked up to be. Yeah, well, let's not argue about it, eh? Just leave the talking to me, all right? And Cyril, the essence of cracking on, you're a reverend. If I just say, not so much the Frank Sinatra, more the Bing Crosby. Don't worry. As soon as he gets here, I'll think of something really religious. Look, <laughs> you are not taking no collections. <laughs> I'll do the talking. Three, two, one. Come in! <laughs> You're Mr. Osborne? Yes, Mr. McGregor. Delighted to meet you. And this must be Lady Antonia. Uh, yes, uh, Lady Antonia, Mr. Osborne, from the Venture Board. Uh, Mr. Osborne, Lady Antonia. Delighted. May I say how much I enjoyed your book? About Mary, Queen of Scots. Oh, do you know, I was wondering where that had got to. <laughs> you must be all right here. You and him be in the same lodge, like. I was expecting to see Captain Twistleton Wickham Fiennes. Oh, Ranulph. Oh, Ranulph couldn't make it tonight. I mean, he's on one of his round-the-world expeditions, you know. Uh, his walk around the poles? Oh, I thought he'd done that. Yeah, well, he's doing it again, the other way. <laughs> he thinks he knows where he's dropped his Wallace. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to the Archdeacon of Runcorn. How are you diddling? Ghouls <laughs> and ghosts and long-legged beasts. What are you, Angus, a child? There's a reasonable explanation for everything. If you didn't go back now, you'll never know what it is. You will have noticed, Mr. Osborne, that I've sent the staff home early. So anything you say is uh, off the record. There'll be no white hole leaks. Know what I mean? Uh, that's appreciated. It's possible that certain people would be tempted to misrepresent the scheme of yours. Well, we have a number of schemes here at McGregor International, Mr. Osborne. We are talking about the vehicle leasing. Yes, your mobility project for the disadvantaged job seeker. Right, rent a bike. <laughs> it caused a certain uh, tremor in the venture board, but the minister himself has militated in favour of a strong initiative. It's been more hotly debated than anything since Concord. Oh, that was nothing to do with us, that Concord. No way were we involved. So, you think the scheme's a winner, then? Oh, I think everybody comes out of this a winner, Mr. McGregor. The unemployed will at least gain healthy exercise. Government will see a useful adjustment in potentially adverse statistics. You and your shareholders will no doubt make a good deal of money. <laughs> there is something I would just like to say. For what we are about to receive, we're all going to be very grateful. <laughs> Great. You bung us the grant tonight and we'll start first thing in the morning. You did bring your checkbook. I don't think you quite understand what I've been saying, Mr. McGregor. Uh, the Venture Board will be behind you all the way. As I see it, we do two things for you. One, we provide a practically inexhaustible supply of disadvantaged job seekers. Two, we smooth your path with planning permissions and so forth. Yes, yes, lovely, but what about the DOSH? Uh, as I said to the Minister, the Venture Board's remit is to aid this pairing, not to succour the already successful. You'll simply raise your capital through normal commercial channels, the merchant banks or whatever your normal methods are. Our normal methods is to round up all the empties and get them down the off licence. <laughs> uh, uh, what the Reverend is referring to is the diocesan scheme for recycling glass vessels. I mean, you've heard of these <laughs> bottle bags. <laughs> Mind me chipping in, but why don't you just give our West the money? Oh, but surely you take the point, Lady Antonia. 
The Venture Board could only fund Mr. McGregor if he were starting out on a shoestring, operating from, oh, I don't know, a, a caravan on a bomb site, say. <laughs> oh, they do! They do! Uh, don't forget to tell me when you get to the ribbon-cutting stage. You'll find the minister wills a very ready pair of scissors. You wouldn't listen, would you? I said we was all right where we was, but no, you had to have a good address and look where it's got you. Oh, shut up a minute, will you, Cyril? I could have sworn I heard Mr. Buchanan then. I saw you come out of that office, sir. Lavinia was right. I should never have transferred to Liverpool. What business is that of yours, sir? I'll tell you what business this is of mine, sir. <laughs> I am Angus Buchanan of the Syrup Usurer's Advisory Board. Yes. Who oh, are you, sir? I am Lancelot Osborne of the Merseyside Venture Board. And of the two of us, I, at least, am sober. Oh, sir. Uh, how dare you suggest, sir, that I am drunk? You are drunk, sir. Your breath smells. Drunk, sir. You don't know what Get you're talking about. Mr. Buchanan right. seems to have took again so nice, well spoken, Mr. Osborne. I wonder why. Uh, you come away, ma'am. Like you've often said yourself, in this world, there are some things we are not meant to know. 